Natalie, uh, your character in the franchise, Ramsey, she's so intelligent. She's able to make decisions and is such an important part of the team. What does it mean for you to play such an empowering character in a franchise that's full of them, but, you know, in a very unique manner with her smarts being the most important uh, part of her? Um, it means so much to me personally. Um, she really embodies um, a person that I wish I'd seen growing up, you know, and um I just love that she has really earned her place in this team just because she's so brilliant at what she does and because of her expertise, because of her very specific skill set, you know, they they can't do the things that they've been doing uh, without her or they can't do it in the way that they do um, without her. So it's it's really um, amazing. And especially just like as a, a woman in the tech space, a woman of color in the tech space, like is very underrepresented and I just love that Ramsey gets to be that, you know, in the world. <laughs> I love that the series is always taking place all over the globe. You know, for F9, what was your favorite location uh, that you filmed at? Uh, sadly, I didn't get to go to any of the cool locations. I did all of my filming in London. Um, and by the way, one of the greatest cities in the world. I live here, I love it here. So obviously, it, it, it was amazing to be shooting at home, but I, I was really sad I didn't get to go to Tbilisi. I didn't get to go to any of the cool locations that um, they shot in. But uh, I've, I think in the, in the kind of movies I've done, one of my favorite locations was shooting in Abu Dhabi for, for Furious 7. And that was just like such a special place. And I'd love to go back there. So. <laughs> You know, your character's a couple films in now and the fans have fully embraced your character, but, you know, coming into such a established franchise with so many, you know, recognizable characters, was there much pressure, you know, before you started? Yeah, of course, but mostly pressure that I put on myself because I was about to walk into a cast with a bunch of people I was a huge fan of. And I was like, oh gosh, don't mess it up. Don't, you know, be awkward or trip over or something embarrassing. Um, so that was, I definitely was like nervous and uh, yeah, like kind of put a, a lot of pressure on myself, but I also just was so supported by the, the rest of the cast and Vin specifically just advocated for me so, um, so much and just embraced me and was like, you know, you're one of us now. And everybody was like, you're part of the family. and. Uh, and it was really easy for me to be like, oh, but I'm just this like, you know, random person from this small seaside town in England that I come from. And they're like huge movie stars. And I think someone reminded me, they were like, we auditioned so many people from all over the place and we want you. So like you earned your place here, like you earned it. So you're you're like, you have just as much right to be here as anyone. And I, and I, rem I remember really appreciating that and just feeling like, okay <laughs> okay I can do this <laughs> yeah that's um, great so you got I was such, really grateful for that that's great you got so, so much uh support from your cast members how's yeah. it been from you know the fans and the, all the support they've given you uh the fans are so awesome like they really are I mean they are so integral to these films and um it's I guess it is quite intimidating when you come into such a established beloved series of films like these and then you know the fans who are so so vocal so uh, loyal and um, you're like oh gosh I hope they like me I hope they like me and the fact that they fully embraced Ramsey was just like it warms my heart it makes me feel so happy because yeah like I said the fans are so important to these films and they they tell us what they want and we and we try and give it to them you know so it made me feel really warm and fuzzy inside and yeah uh, some of my favorite scenes in the film are with yourself, Ludacris, and Tyrese. Uh, you guys all have so much great chemistry, and it's been that way ever since you first appeared in the series. What do you attribute that to, and how fun is it filming with those two? Well, uh, Chris and Tyrese are just such personalities. They're, they're so funny, like individually, when they're together, like they have great chemistry because obviously they're longtime friends. They've known each other a long time. And I think that it's very easy to, uh, to like their energy is infectious, you know, and you can't help but want to like jump in and have banter. And uh, they're both very like, um, uh, like they want to hang out and like, bring everyone together and I think the whole family's like that but you know I I've 
had the pleasure of spending loads of time with those two specifically and just like having you know just having bands as we say you know <laughs> they're just lovely <laughs> You know, and one of my favorite scenes in the film is where it actually kind of pokes a little fun at itself. And you, uh, you three are talking about all the crazy scenarios that you've gone through. And Roman starts to think, you know, maybe I'm invincible. And I've always enjoyed the comedy in the series and that it's not afraid to point out like just how over the top things get in such a, a fun way. Do you think that lighthearted nature has uh, played a real role in the series Mass Appeal? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I think it just kind of forces people to be like, it's fun. like we're having fun, guys. Like, you know, if we were to sort of dissect every single thing and be like, but the physics doesn't quite, you know, like it, it, I, I understand that it's easy to do that. But it's also like we just have so much fun with the, these big stories and these big um, like it's almost like fantasy, like this is where we go to escape and live out our you know kind of the wildest parts of our imagination and so I think it's okay that we can like laugh at that and point you know poke fun at it as you say and um yeah I I, I think that's part of why people like it because it's almost like a bit of a wink to the audience saying yeah we know <laughs> and like you know and we're in it we're in it we're in on the same joke together you know make sure you're connected uh, Fast and Furious has always had such a great theme of family and it's a big focus here. And one of the things, you know, that's so great about Dom's chosen family is that it's so diverse and full of people from so many different walks of life. You know, how meaningful is it to you that, you know, it's natural representation and it's in one of the biggest blockbuster franchises, you know, all around? It, it means the world. I mean, I, I, part of the reason why I even was... Uh, attracted to uh fast and furious the first one was because of the representation within it and i 20 years ago you know that kind of representation just wasn't happening and they we, well it was but they certainly weren't the like leads of their own movies and like were the heroes and you know the one that we're like vouching for like there's you know, so many tropes that like, especially actors of color, like take up in TV and film. And the, but they definitely weren't like the, the, the leads and the heroes. So I always just felt so that was so important, especially to a young woman uh, and a young black mixed woman to see, to see this was so hugely important. And that kind of ethos has just kind of grown and grown and grown. And we're, it, even to the point of like the fact that we go all over the world, we see all these different cultures and hear different language and music. And, you know, it, it creates this idea that we're all connected. We all have, we all should be represented. And it's just, I think it's instrumental to the success of these films. One of the action sequences finally has your character getting behind the wheel. And there's this great revelation that she doesn't know how to drive. So what was it like getting to, you know, be more involved on the action side this time around? It, it was really, really fun. And I and I think it's so hilarious how Ramsey, Ramsey's kind of introduction to driving in the in the in the movies about cars is the fact that she doesn't know how. I think it's just really funny. And like it was a great comedic moment for Ramsey. And I I but what I loved about it is that she stepped up. She couldn't do it. She was scared she wasn't prepared and um she she stepped up and she did what she had to do and um apparently she's a natural <laughs> and then my last question here uh your character has a really unique role in the narrative since she is you know so tech smart and you wind up explaining some really complex uh situations to the others in the audience like when you're going through all this like super tech heavy stuff how do you remember those lines um I uh, repetition like just learning lines you just have to repeat them and repeat them and repeat them but it helps me because I'm not like tech genius like Ramsey it helps me to try and actually understand what it is I'm explaining so I try to research what those ideas are and you know we have consultants that can give me some information as well and I try and paint a picture in my mind about what it is I'm actually explaining it I'm actually explaining to people so um it makes it it just makes it easier if I have some idea because otherwise you're then just saying words that don't make 
have any meaning and it makes it harder for me in an acting way to like connect to it or to anchor to it so I try to um have some idea but some of these things are really really complex so um I can only do <laughs> you sound <laughs> like you know what you're talking about in the film thank you so much for well your that's time the today. point that's that's what we hope <laughs> thank you